For those of you getting here online, this is your brother, Pastor Kevin Quellchild Rodriguez, Living on the Rock Ministries. I pray and I hope and I trust that this message find you well. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to go ahead and get right into services. I think that, uh, thank you, Holy Spirit Hub. Um, for those in church who have known of our family situation with my mother uh, transitioning and having since gone to be with the Lord in this last week, I want to thank each and everyone uh, in the church who was praying on our family uh, during that time. So on behalf of my dad, Eddie Rodriguez, and the whole Rod Rodriguez family, we thank you all very much uh, for your prayers. All right. So let's get right into this thing. I am excited for what the Lord has placed in my heart to speak of here today. And uh, the sermon title today is Childlike Faith. But let's go ahead and get into the Word of God. Prepare our hearts in prayer. So if I could have you all stand one more time with me for the reading of God's word. Amen. So we're going to go right into the book of Matthew chapter 18. We're going to read from verses 1 through 5 to prepare our hearts for today's service and prayer. <clears throat> At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child to him and placed the child among them, and he said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like a little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Let us bow our heads, close our eyes, and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word here today and the message that you have laid into my spirit. Lord, I fully deflate, I decrease that, Father, you would be fully manifested here today. Lord, I yield my lips, I, I yield my everything to you, O oh God, that you would be an oracle from the kingdom of heaven. From your heart, speak what you want to have spoken through these lips today. Father, I thank you for the children. They remind us of the things that we once had the innocence and, and the beauty of great faith and the ability to dream. Father, I believe today you're going to stir our hearts and encourage us to see even how children minister to us adults even unto today. Father, we, we welcome the children as Jesus welcomed the children. Father, we pray that you manifest here your glory. Nothing that manifests here, though, in spirit do we glory in the flesh, but, Father, we deflect all our praise, and all the glory goes to you, Father God. Holy Spirit, take full control of today's service. Encourage us all here today by your word and by the children that Jesus so welcomes, and we do as well. Lord, we thank you, we love you, and careful to give you all the praise, honor, and glory, and all the worship in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. As I told you earlier, children, you know, Jesus in this scripture was talking to his disciples. His disciples means the students of Jesus. They were adults. And Jesus told his disciples, his, his students, that to, to go and enter into the kingdom of heaven, we have, to, uh, we have to be like the lowly position of children. It was uh, just before our calling in 2018, me and my family drove out to uh, Tennessee. And before we drove out to Tennessee, the Lord spoke into my spirit at that time and said, children are going to be ministering to you. And uh, you're going to be getting away at a certain time. A couple weeks go by, I believe it was about a couple weeks, and a friend who I hadn't been in touch with for a while, a while called me up on the phone, and, and we got to talking, and then he invited us to a children's uh, outreach 
that was in Tennessee. And I remember what the Lord spoke into my spirit. And I was like, this is that invite that God spoke into my spirit. That the children are going to minister to us. So we got away for, um, I think it was almost a, a week's uh, event. We drove out there. Trevor came. We all went into the van. We drove out there. And as God spoke into my spirit, your brother standing behind the pulpit here today, I didn't go out there to minister to anybody. It wasn't my place to do it at that time. It was my place to listen and to observe and to learn and to be encouraged and ministered by children. And that's exactly what I did. And we got to witness a great manifestation there in Perry Stone's uh, ministry. It was, what was the um, event called? The uh, Warrior Fest? Warrior Fest, right? And it was in 2018. It was a wonderful, wonderful, awesome uh, conference that was centered on children. And like God said, I was ministered, I was taught the most innocent things, the most beautiful. Um, I remember one child in the middle of worship and his posture was so mature in the front of that, in the front of that congregation. And he was just with lifted hands and closed eyes and total reverence to God. The beautiful witnessing of children praising and exalting our Lord and Savior, Jesus. And it was there, too, where even my children would get charged by the Holy Spirit and begin to, you know, uh, engage in that setting and begin to minister to people. So now I'm watching children ministering to children and the, the move of the Holy Spirit uh, moving in that place. And it was then, after all that had taken place, that when God spoke into my spirit, shared this with my wife in advance, she can attest to this, that, that as we were driving home from that event, after the children ministered into my heart, it was then, as we were driving our little old minivan back home from Tennessee, driving through Gallup, New Mexico, where the spirit of God would then lay into my spirit the very calling that he had for our family. Amen. So children, we want to honor you here today under the Lordship of Jesus Christ as Jesus honored the children as well and even rebuked his students, which were adults, right, for hindering or trying to prevent the little children from getting to know Jesus. So children, I want you to know here today, Bear, I want you to know that you are special. And as adults, I get behind the pulpit here today, and with the rest of us adults in here, we get to honor you under the Lordship of Christ Jesus. As Jesus welcomed the children, so do we. And it's beautiful. You are special. You teach us even things. I'm going to get into a particular um, uh, reading of a, of a native proverb that is going to bless our heart here today. But as Jesus, as Jesus would speak about the position, the lowly position of children, this lowly position uh, for the ch of the children represents humility. We remember talking about the 12 characteristics of quail not too long ago, right? And one of the beautiful characteristics of quail is that they, they operate, they live in a lowly position. Jesus says, you need to become like the children and, and be of their lowly position in the kingdom of heaven is for those who do that. Amen. We're going to talk more about this lowly position, but right now I want to get into a native proverb that is going to bless you, that is in line with what Jesus spoke of in the book of Matthew that we just read. And, and in line with today's uh, sermon topic, child-like faith. Child-like faith. Amen. 
Uh, I'm going to pull it up real quick. I, was, I didn't have time to print it out, but I got it saved in my screenshots here. And I'm going to read this to you. But this, brothers and sisters, children, when I heard these words from this native elder, right, who has passed on to be with Creator many years, but this elder called Black Elk, these words resonate in my heart and in my soul and my spirit. And it should encourage us, thank you Holy Spirit, huh? all of us adults to be able to look at our children and say, even you can teach us a thing. Amen. Because children, you are special. And listen to these words from, from Black Elk, from the, uh, I believe, Oglola, uh, Oko, uh, Oglola uh, Lakota tribe. Lagala. Ogala Lakota. <laughs> Thank you. Grown men, and this can also refer to grown men and women. Grown men can learn from very little children, for the hearts of the little children are pure. Therefore, the Great Spirit, the Holy Spirit, may show to them, us adults, many things which older people miss. This is a beautiful, awesome word that no doubt in my mind is inspired by the Great Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Because children, let me tell you something. As you grow up and as you get older, we can all testify as adults, anyone here uh, 18 and older, that the world has a way of taking from your innocence. The innocence that you have right now, the purity of heart that even Black Elk was talking about, we see this as, as parents, if we have our eyes open to our children, to see the simplicity of our children just talk. It wasn't that long ago that when I preached a similar message in our Vietnamese church at that time, God had us preparing for this ministry right now that we're operating in. That shortly after going under the leadership of my senior pastor there, that I would be preaching a very similar message today, but then was a two-part message, one for the children, one for the adults, and it was childlike faith and heaven. But shortly after that, as I would begin to teach Sunday school to the children, <laughs> one of the children... Uh, we were talking about faith and what faith means and we were looking at the biblical definition of faith and we're going to get into that again here today as we close out but <clears throat> this, is a, this is a part of the testimony that I think that is awesome that goes to the pureness of heart of children and their simplicity and how they can explain and articulate things. See, I'm using a big word there again but I, what I just really mean is that children, you have a way of explaining things in a very simple way that sometimes we adults uh, confuse things and try to make it sound, you know, more complicated, but you have a way of saying, no, it's time to reset and, and make things simple again, because if you can't understand a thing, why even speak of a thing, right? But when children speak simply to us, it reminds us how important it is to communicate so that we can help one another understand that which we're trying to get across, that that we're trying to communicate. Amen. I don't know about you, but I don't like hearing a bunch of words that don't make sense and or I don't understand it because it doesn't help me. But when I can hear a simple word and it makes sense. So this young man, as we're talking about faith among, I don't know, maybe 15 children uh, at the time, we started talking about faith and, and, and explaining in your own words what faith is. And one of the young boys uh, said, Pastor Kevin, here's how I would explain faith. Believing in the unseen. <laughs> Believing in the unseen. In four words, 
This young man, Minduk couldn't have been more than, uh, I don't know, seven or eight at that time. But that's uh, in four words, in four words, he described in his own words what faith is. And see, like Black Elk talked about the pureness of the heart of our children, that they show us things that we miss, right? Here, men duck in four words, speaks what faith is. And it was succinct, that means it was, it was condensed, and it was little, bit of words, and yet very awesome, amazing. My son can tell you uh, what I'll explain in probably 20 words, he can do it in probably five. Amen, that's a gift, and I'm glad that God has, has given that to him. And sometimes I need to be reminded, keep it simple. In fact, in our work, if I could just, you know, push this simplicity a little bit, you know, at work we have a, well, people in, 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 in the industry, right, those who uh, are in manufacturing especially when you're dealing with a lot of different processes and a lot of different things that you have to maintain control so that you have consistency. And I don't want to bore you with all of that. But we live by, when we explain things in terms of work instructions, like you get something to build at home and you're building a bed, there's, it comes with instructions, right? Those instructions should be very plain and simple. So what we live by in our industry is a rule called KISS, K-I-S-S. -S -S. Keep it simple, stupid. But that doesn't mean that we're stupid, but it means explaining something so clearly that you can fully understand what it is that you need to do. Amen. So children, uh, we thank you. We love you. You are special. And as we continue to get into uh, today's scripture, and as we talk about childlike faith, because adults, I think some of us, we need to remember the things sometimes that God has laid into our spirit. We can learn from our children that, that children dream big. Children have a great imagination, and this is part of the faith that pleases God, that the Word of God talks about. Amen. So, so us adults, God has laid into some of our spirits and into our mind and into our soul, even since, the, since we were youth ourselves. I remember seeing visions that are carried out today, then, thinking, oh my God, that... Why does this keep recurring? You know, I know now. But I want to encourage us adults that, that there have been visions, there have been dreams, there have been things that God at an early age laid into your spirit. And he, he wants us to be reminded of these things. And maybe it's a link to something that feels empty and there's a gap in our, in our life. Maybe we come and we all get there myself included, where we got to reset, right? We come to a place where we're confused, uh, maybe even feeling at a place of being complacent. It wasn't that long ago I preached on recharge because sometimes that's what we need. We give out, we give out, we give out, we pour out, we pour out, we pour out. But at some point, we got to realize, oh, my prayer life has been lacking. I got to go get recharged. But in a similar way, Today, I think that our dreams and our visions that God has laid in, those are divine visions for us. They are to be a reminder of what God's destiny is over our life. To live and walk a purposeful, driven life by faith. Right? That vision may look like something that does not look like anything in our uh, vision, in our in our in our eyesight here in the physical right now, but it's a future state that God wants to bring about. Amen. And whether it's to become a doctor, a lawyer. 
to do all these things, a firefighter, a police officer, children, whatever you put your mind to, but us adults, we got to be reminded ourselves that God laid those visions into our spirit because it's a promise and that if we could just believe in the promise of God over our life and walk it out in faith, that we work towards that, with God's help, he brings it to pass. Amen. Amen. We walk by faith, not by sight. And you know, I posted just this last week about even having a faith the size of a mustard seed. See, Abraham and his wife Sarah compromised their faith for a little while. God laid into their spirit years ago, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to birth a child from the womb of your, your wife, even at an old age, even though they thought that she was incapable of bearing a child. And even later on in life, <clears throat> she's getting older and older, and I can only imagine, sometimes we're tested, but it's only because God's about to bring a great glory, a great blessing should we pass that test. And even though they compromised their faith, their faith was never diminished, it was never reduced down to nothing, they still held on to something. Still believed in God, but they ran ahead of God and, 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 and Sarah would begin to say, okay, well, have your baby through this other woman and, and, and marry her so you can have the baby uh, legally, lawfully, right? And they have that child. But that's not what God wanted. And they remembered the promise of God. God always speaking into Sarah's, into Sarah's spirit through her husband. And through the angels that, that this child will come. It will come. But they went a different direction. And even to the point where at the time when, when these words were being spoken, Sarah would begin to laugh like, are you kidding? I'm old. I'm too old. I'm, I'm past uh, the, the, the time to be able to bear a child. But guess what happened? Exactly what God said he was going to do in his timing, he did do. And brought forth the baby through the womb of Sarah. And God spoke these words into Abraham that because you had faith, and even though you compromised it a little bit, and we do that sometimes, right? We get into a medical situation. My wife can tell you about some things being tested in faith. Hallelujah. Right after being called and then being uh, deathly ill because of end-stage kidney failure. We all have a story of pain and struggling, but when you hold on, even if it's the size of a mustard seed, like Abraham, God will bless it. And what God spoke into Abraham, and it is true even to this very day, that by faith we are the children even of Abraham by faith. And it was his faith, it was his wife's little bit of faith that was renewed, but God spoke that through the seed of Abraham, would be the seed like the seashore, the sand on the seashore of, of, of the ocean. Could you imagine all the seeds, or I'm sorry, all the uh, grain, you know, the little uh, sands? Like even if you just picked up a, a handful of sand, there's hundreds of, of, of sand particles in that, in that handful, right? So, what's that? Granules, yeah, the little, the, the little uh, uh, sand granules. But if you could imagine, like the seashore and throughout the world, the, the, the granules, the many, that's what God promised Abraham from him. And like the, the stars in heaven. You know, even here in Camp Verde, when, you, when it gets dark, you can look... If you're at a high point of the mountain and you look up, I mean, it's beautiful. It's much different than what you see in Phoenix when you're in the, in the valley. But when you're up on the mountaintop and you look at night, you can see the numerous stars.
stars out there. That's what God said to Abraham. I will bless your seed like the sand of the seashore and the stars in heaven. So brothers and sisters, children here today, faith is important. And we can learn from the children, but we can also continuously grow in our faith because the word of God reminds us that faith cometh. And that word cometh really also means a continuation that you don't just reach a certain point of faith and you stop there. No, that's not God's plan. But faith cometh by hearing the word of God. Amen? So as we continue to feed our soul with the word of God, guess what happens to our faith? It gets greater and greater and greater. Amen? Amen. So today I want to stir our hearts and encourage us that through even our children to be restored and to be recharged and to be reminded of the things that many of us, I believe, God has already spoken into our heart. And he wants us to be reminded that is his, his divine destiny over our life. Jeremiah 29, 11, it says that God has a plan to prosper us. A plan to give us hope and a great future. Not to uh, hinder us, not to destroy us, not to harm us, but to prosper us. Amen. Amen. We need to be reminded sometimes. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. If you would, turn with me now to the book of <clears throat> Matthew again. And we're going to read from chapter 19 now. Book of Matthew, chapter 19, verses 13 through 15. Then people brought little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. For the disciples rebuked them. This is saying that the disciples of Jesus rebuked the children. That word rebuke in this context really means that he, the disciples as there was many people coming to follow Jesus and to hear his wonderful messages, children started to come and, and his disciples stopped the children from reaching Jesus. Okay? So when we read it in this context, this is, this is that imagery, this is that picture I want you to see. Because something happens after knowing that. Jesus said, let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. When he had placed his hands on them, he went on from there. Jesus, like black elk in this native proverb, Jesus singles out the children and speaks of the importance of children. And if Jesus emphasizes that the kingdom of heaven is for such as these, what does that tell us adults? When Jesus speaks of, you know, uh, you, 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 to, to, to follow me, you gotta, you gotta deny yourself. Adults, I'm talking to us. We gotta deny ourselves, we gotta crucify our flesh, we gotta, we gotta kill ourselves spiritually. Right? But Jesus says, deny yourself, hold up your cross, right? And then follow me. To do that, it means that to be born again, think about that. We were born once upon a time, right? Obviously. I'm standing before you. I came from a mom and a dad that produced me. That was my earthen birth. But my spiritual birth was 
was the birth that when I hit the altar and I gave myself to Christ, right? I said, Lord, like a little child, I had to get down on my knees. I had to take the lowly position of a child and I had to confess to the Lord, I know you've shown me some things that I have done wrong. Lord, I'm ashamed of myself. And remember, shame serves only a temporary purpose. Remember that. It's also the spirit of contrition that we learn about in the Bible. We'll talk about that another time. But it's important that, that we humble ourselves and take the lowly position because when we're born again, there's transformation. There's a change in us. We don't do the same things that we did before. We may battle some things, we, and God helps us along the way. But if, if, if you were to know me 12 years ago, before I got saved, you would, you would have seen a very dark, wicked, evil person before you. And the things that I did then, that when I went down on my knees, even casted a wicked spirit out of myself. But when I did that, my family and everybody who knew me saw a change in me. It wasn't perfect, but that being born again like the children, I had to humble, I had to take a lowly position and I had to cry out to God. I deny myself, Lord. By your salvation, I hold up my cross proudly. And I follow you now. I give you my life. And in that, sanctification goes on and goes on. And we won't, we won't bore you with that. That's important. But it means this, basically, is that as we walk with Christ... He makes us better and better and better. Gooder and gooder. Amen? Like, uh, what is his name? I love to quote this. Um, Denzel Washington. He says this, that, that it's not about perfection, but progress. Perfection is an aim. Jesus was the perfect Example how to, as a living sacrifice, later becoming the ultimate sacrifice for all mankind, showed us perfectly an example of how and that it is possible to honor God and keep the commandments by faith following Him. Amen. So, so that is the lowly position that when we are born again, we had a past that brought us to the point where it took that to get us on our knees and we had to be born again and we had to follow Christ so that his favor and his word that helps to increase our faith would improve us and get us better and better as we walk with him. Amen. So now children there was a time in my life, because like I said a little bit earlier, that when we, as we get older, there's something about the world, the, the, the different things that go on out there, the wicked things, the, the, the evil things. And some of it becomes uh, an influence, meaning it tries to draw you into that bad, evil, worldly stuff. Right? It is bad to get involved with drugs, right? All of us can raise our hand in this room. I don't even need to ask, but all of us have had loved ones die or friends who have died too young because of drugs. It is wrong to 
act out evil like in the inner cities. There's a lot of gangs in the inner city and what do they do? They push their agenda and you know, they target little children to come in. They recruit children. That's the devil. Amen. And, and this is what happens is that as you get older and older and more of this happens and you see it, it takes from the purity of the heart that even Black Elk speaks of to the children. Your innocence becomes more now something else. And over time, many years, you get as old as I was when I gave my life to Christ, I was like, oh my goodness. Now that I found Christ again and how he would have children bring back to my memory even then, how much I lost focus of the things that God laid into my spirit, the visions and the dreams that he laid into my spirit. So that's what happens that in life, your faith, even as a child, the, the ability to imagine great things, it starts to get taken away from you. It, it's like it's, it's stolen from you until you come back to a point where there's a reset. And for me, that reset was giving my life to Christ and walking and following Him and His ways. Jesus is saying, I want the children to know me now and forevermore. Children, we have an opportunity that we get to pour out our love that God has graced us with into you so that you know Him now and forevermore. Amen. Now, here's, here's how it can work, right? So I was, like one of you, and I'm not going to point you out, I promise, I'm not here to embarrass anybody, but as a young child, I, my body, my hands, my knees were rocked with warts. The little growths of skin all over my hands and on my knees. And as a child, I remember just thinking how ugly it was. It looked weird and strange. And then I was getting picked on at school. It doesn't feel good to be picked on, right? But then <clears throat> my dad would speak to me one day and I was telling him how disappointed I was to have to go to school with my hands and my knees with, with these warts because I'm now getting picked on and I'm very uncomfortable, right? It was uncomfortable going to school back in those days anyways. But to have the wart issue, you know, now we have technology where it's a simple procedure. You can go to the, you know, the... the doctor's office and they can burn them off with, with ice or whatever, with the cold uh, ice, right? But back in my day, that didn't happen. I, I was left with words that I didn't know what was going to happen. But as I would begin to tell my dad about my warts and this issue, he would begin to tell me, son, speak to those things. And say, work, work, go away. Don't come back another day. And I would, and I believed in my dad. If my dad told me something, if my mom told me something, I, I didn't question it, I believed it. I trusted them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This should be our relationship with God now, is that as we truth transition, like Apostle Paul says, when I was a child, I thought like a child, I, I talked like a child, I, I did the things that children do, but when God came into my life, it advanced me, right? And now that becomes the relationship that we have with God, but let me tell you something, children, as I would begin to speak to these things, knowing that what my dad said was true, that they were going to go away, I did not doubt one bit that those words were going to go away because my dad told me they would go away. But that I had to speak to those things and command them to go away that they would not come back another day. And guess what happened, children? I wasn't blessed to go to the doctor's office where they burned them off. But these things started to go away. 
And as I would begin to remember, you know, as I was developing that sermon, even back at the Vietnamese church, God brought that beautiful memory back to my heart. And he says, I took those things away from you. And see, the word of God says this, that all good things, all good things, listen, church, all good things that we experience, all good things come from heaven, from the Father in heaven. So anything and everything that God speaks into our heart, it will light up with his living word. Somebody say amen. amen. It will light up with his word. Anything that does not line up with his word, something else is in your ear. And that's how important it is that by faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of God. That's how important that if we want what we had as a child and to continue to grow, we got to be in the word. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But those things went away. And the word of God even talks about, you know, uh, speak that which has not come to pass. In other words, command a thing to come to pass. And even Jesus speaks about, you know, the things of the unseen. This is all to help us understand what faith is. But our children can help remind us what faith is as well. And our children can minister to us to extend and to grow our faith as well. God uses the children to grow our faith as well. Amen. And that is the beautiful thing that as we have that relationship with God, that he will take that thing that we once had as a child, be able to imagine great things. But Jesus says, look, anything that you ask in my name, I will do. It's got to be from good motives. But how do we know what good motives are? How do we know how to walk with integrity, upright, honoring our parents and honoring God? This right here is a book of, of life, but it, it, it tells us how to be moral, how to act right, how to love. It shows us how to love. The Word is God, was, was God, it, and it, it became flesh and dwelt among us. The Word of God is God. And through His Word, through His love, He teaches us how to love. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Turn with me now to the book of John. Uh, chapter 14, or I'm sorry, book of John chapter 3. <clears throat> I wrote these backwards, so we want to go in order here. Book of John <clears throat> chapter 3, and we're going to read from verses 3 through 8. Book of John chapter 3, verses 3 through 8. Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to the flesh, but the spirit gives birth to the spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. So this water and spirit baptism, right? We get baptized in water. It represents publicly the uh, omission of our sins. We've repented. We come to God and we say, Lord, I'm sorry for all that I've done wrong, but now I want to follow you. But the secondary baptism is being filled with the Spirit of God. And those who are filled with the Spirit of God recognize that they are born again. Jesus says quite simply to his disciples that you will know by the fruit. 
Amen. So when we take that position like the children and become lowly in our position, that means I once was prideful. I used to think I was all that in a bag of chips. But like a, a child who is obedient to their parents and acting with, by the commands of their parents out of obedience, honoring God in heaven by doing that, that we become blessed. But we got to go back to that position later on in life when we've drifted so far away and we become corrupted. I was once corrupted. I once deviated from the things that were good, that once were pure in heart, like Black Eagle said to the children, pure in heart, the innocence of our children. But God does what when we are born again? He restores us. Amen. So children, parents, as we stay grounded in these things, as we are reminded of the things that God has spoken into our heart, remember that is a divine encounter from God so that you never forget what he's laid into your spirit. God laid into my spirit when I was a child. I was in special education courses. And God would show me visions of teaching people of multitudes teaching them. And I would think, Lord, how can I do that? I, I struggle even learning. I try, but I struggle. And you know what? God not only had me teaching in manufacturing way before I was ever uh, born again, just to go to show how God will have his hand on you, even when you don't know it, that his grace covers us when we don't even know it, but when he brings us back to that place where children were a reminder of what we once thought as adults, brings that back, and you're like, oh wow, I did it in the secular world, when I came out of the light, he did it in the spiritual world, and he taught me how to divide the word of God, I could teach the word of God to children, and I can have a theological conversation with those of great faith who teach it as well. But that is not my boast. That's God's boast. God took, and I once forgot, children, what God showed me that I'll be teaching people. I forgot that he put that in my spirit that I'd be teaching one day. But guess what? He took that kid who was... Uh, special education, product of special education, learning disability. And I stand before the presence of the Almighty God in fear and trembling of Him and all reverence to Him. And I can tell you in His presence, He did exactly what He put in my mind that He was going to do. And from here, guess what, children? As long as I maintain my humility in the position of a child, and I walk in step with him, he's only going to continue to grow what it is that we do for him. I believe there's a, there are other ministries being birthed right now. There are other ministries. And see, when we have these ministries coming to help the world out there, because we live in a very wicked world out there. Hello, somebody. We do. And it's getting worse and worse. But those of us who rise above the occasion to say, Lord, if you can use anyone, you can use me. And when we say yes and amen, and we do it in lowly position like a child, with childlike faith, maintaining our humility, we help a world who is hurting. Amen. You may have forgot what God had planted in your heart, into your, your mind, into your spirit. But I'm a living testimony to you that he will do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask. And he will. He will bring those visions to fruition. Sometimes we just gotta, we gotta pass the test of faith. A trial comes and hits us. Hang on to God. Don't run away from him. Stay to him. Stay humble and say, Lord, in this situation, I still need you. Keep my heart in your hands, Lord. Keep the lowly position of the children that our faith would be intact and the humility that covers us. Humility is beautiful. 
I think of humility similar like this. Let me, let me break it down physically, right? So when you paint something, let's just say you were going to paint a bike and it's made out of metal. You know, the very first thing that you got to do to that bike, you got to prepare it. In the preparation process to accept the paint, the top coating, you got to primer it. The primer uh, sticks to the metal, and then the primer is a mechanism that sticks to the paint that you apply to. Listen, for God's holiness to cover us, listen, for His holiness to cover us, there's a little prep work that we need to do. Right? And that is that we humble ourselves and we pray to Him. When we humble ourselves and we maintain that humility, we're not perfect, but humility is not perfection. Humility is recognizing our limitations too. Humility is being honest about our weaknesses. And when we do that, in humility, God's holiness covers us. Somebody say amen. Because God's holiness, His grace, His shed blood on the cross cannot stick to us, cannot cover us if we're proud. So like the bike, before it could get painted, it needed something to stick to first. That was the primer, the preparation that could then be covered by a beautiful paint. God's grace is beautiful, amen? And God's grace covers us. Hallelujah. Turn with me now to the book of John, chapter 14. Book of John, chapter 14. We're going to read verses 12 through 14. Thank you, Jesus. And the word of the Lord reads, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Parents, we got to remember that, you know, we serve a God that is intentional. He's an intentional God. And he doesn't want us, you know, if someone back in the day asked me, hey, you know, <clears throat> you're going to go to heaven one day. I remember being, uh, I remember being um, lazy about my response sometimes back in the day. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. You know, hopefully I do. You know, Apostle Paul teaches us, come boldly before the throne room of grace. See, when we take this lowly position of a child, we humble ourselves so that God builds the strength in us. We're not just lackadaisical, that was the word I was going to use, but not lazy about our response, but heck yes, I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven because I love the Lord and he changed me. When I was born again, he renewed me. He, he made all things new going forward. So now I can go like Apostle Paul says, boldly before the throne room of grace because I worship and praise him on earth as it is in heaven. I, I do that now and no more will you hear those lazy words from me. But you know, his grace covered me in my ignorance. His grace covered me when I didn't even know it. So sometimes we just got to thank God for what he's already done. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's a shit. Thank you, Lord. So what he's already done. Children, sometimes it is you that has us looking back. Just like Black Hill. They show us, you children, show us things that we missed in our life. That's beautiful. And I appreciate you children because of that. I thank God. I take heed to his word. And his word always is made manifest. We apply it. It will never return us void. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Closing out. 
It was put on my heart that we would go to Bible about what faith is. We, we know from a child's perspective what faith is, is believing in the unseen, and that is true. But we're going to break down some faith as we, as we pray out here today. Turn with me now to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Book of Hebrews. <clears throat> book of Hebrews, chapter 11. We're going to read verses 1 through 3. Book of Hebrews, chapter 11, 1 through 3. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what was so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. If you can imagine when God spoke the earth there was nothing there was nothing. There was an abyss, there was water, and the Spirit of God hovered across the water. The Word of God reminds us in the book of Genesis. But God saw fit that through the water, He would command by nothing, by what was invisible, but He had the vision in His mind that as He spoke it, that it was going to develop. That's why God is called Creator. He created heaven. He created earth and all that is within them. Faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things to come. Like Menduck said, believing in the unseen. Barry, you may be thinking at one point in your life, I don't know that if I if I can get an A, but if I work hard towards it, maybe I could get an A because right now I'm, I got a C. That's faith believing that if I work towards it, I could get my grade from a C to an A. It ain't there yet, but it can happen. You have to be able to envision that whatever it is that you work towards is better than what you see today, but later will be something better as you work towards it. That's faith. And that is the faith that pleases God in heaven. Amen? The confidence. I, now, I'm at a place in my life, thank you, Lord. I believe He will only continue to grow as I keep my lowly position as a child, keep the faith. But when God speaks to me, of a thing. There's no doubt in my mind now. And children, you help me get to where I'm at today. Because God used you to minister to me to get to where it is where I'm at today. But like Abraham, I used to compromise my faith. It used to get weak at times. But because I still held on and I, I, I was still trusting, even though it was a little bit, God took that little bit and he increased it. Now he speaks to me. It lined up with the word. I don't doubt it. Just like when my dad would be driving and it was raining and we would drive through the uh, woods of, of, of Flagstaff many times as a kid. We would, we would be in Flagstaff a lot. And as it was raining and pouring, I would get scared. Neither my mom or my dad would look back to me and say, son, everything's going to be okay. And as soon as those words were spoken into my little heart, I knew everything was going to be okay. But I had to be born again as an adult, take back that lonely position, but now under the Lordship of Christ Jesus, so that I have peace in everything. Even if I'm looking at death in the face, I have peace. And I have the joy of the Lord as my strength, as Nehemiah would say. But it came from some trials. I don't question God no more. It lines up with his word. We don't compromise. We do it to the best of our ability. And hello, somebody, sometimes we even get it wrong sometimes. And we got to get back on our knees and say, Lord, I know I fell short here. 
What do I need to do? Because prayer ain't just about, to, about petitioning God for everything that we want. Prayer is also listening to Him. Getting direction from Him. Amen. I took direction. He spoke into my spirit. Your kids are going to be ministering to you. And you're going you're gonna to get away for a while. Two weeks later it happened. I don't doubt God no more. If he speaks a thing into my spirit and lines up with his word and it's for my edification, it's for the good of those around me. Because what, what does the body of Christ do? We build each other up. We don't tear each other down. And by the light of Christ in us, that's how everybody out there in the world knows that we're his disciples. Because we don't act in that way. You may get mad at me, you may hate me, but I ain't going to return that anger and hatred towards you. And by this we become the salt of the earth. This we preserve God. Amen. Children, we love you and we thank you. We honor you as Jesus honors you. You're important and you're valuable. You understand that, Bear? You're important and valuable. Uh, Nevaeh? You're important and valuable. You understand that? Amen. God loves you. Creator loves you. Amen. Hallelujah. Look, <clears throat> I felt in my spirit today <clears throat> that uh, I would call an altar call for us adults, myself included. And, and children, right now, if I could just have you to stand up. Children, under 18, children, stand up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Adults, our faith, if this spoke to you and you're like, yes, Lord, it help me to increase my faith. Lord, even with the children around me, my grandchildren, my children, my nephews, my nieces, Lord, I need my faith to be increased. If you're like me, come join me at the altar. I want to pray for us. And children, I want you to just bear witness and stretch out your hands. Because if I'm the only one who needs greater faith in this place, I want your prayers on my side. But adults, come up to the altar. You need greater faith. We want to ask God for greater faith. Come up. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. I'll give you about 10 seconds. Thank you, Jesus. Kids, point your hands in our direction. Come into agreement. Please. Jeremy, Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the children. We thank you, that, Lord, that as our faith sometimes gets distorted, gets confused, Lord, you can have a resource right in our home, like our children, to speak simply into our hearts, to realize that, Lord, sometimes we forget the things that, Lord, you have birthed into our spirit, the vision, the, the missions, Lord. The, your word says that we perish, not only for our lack of knowledge, but also for the lack of vision. Father, we thank you here today when we humbly ask of you, Lord, as we lay bare our hearts. Lord, increase the faith within us. The faith, the very faith that pleases you, that honors you. Father, we thank you for your restoration. We thank you that you remind us of the things that we forget. We thank you for the children to help build our faith back up. That, Lord, child faith is very very precious, very divine, and very uh, trustworthy in teaching of the innocence and purity of heart. So here today, Lord, I pray over every adult here that made it to the altar here today, that as, as the children bear witness with us, oh God, that Lord, you would increase your faith in our heart. And Lord, we are just careful, dear God, to give you all the praise, all the honor, all the worship, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. <laughs>